So today we go into the second point of uh, show victory. Let's read together. If we trust in God, have a close relationship with Him, and obey Him, He will bless us in all areas of our life. That if we, uh, there are three parts. First is uh, we trust in Him. Trust that what He says is true. Trust that He is loving God. That He is real. He, he can bless us. Trust Him in all areas of our life. That don't worry. And then have a close relationship with Him all the time. Pray to Him all the time. Enjoy Him all the time. Meditate on the Word of God all the time. Apply the Word of God to our life all the time. And then obey Him. Then He'll bless us in all areas of our life. Uh, some people may say, why do we have to follow Him before He'll bless us? Actually, God's blessing is for all people. All people will be blessed. He will give us rain and the sun and uh, different kind of blessings. The food from uh, uh, nature that uh, He'll bless us in actually all people. But if we want deeper blessings, uh, the non-Christians will not have the joy and peace that we have. They will not have the perfect plan of God. So in order to have all areas of our life blessed by God, we need to follow Him in every, all areas of our life and then our relationship, uh, when we have that relationship, that His blessings will come. The first point is, the whole world is in God's hand. That everything, that He is in control of everything, that uh, all the blessings are in His hands. And all blessings came from God. That you can see here, that uh, first on the right hand side, top, you can see Jesus dying on the cross. That's the greatest blessings, the greatest blessing of all. And then the rain and the sun and the church and food and our health and animals in nature, our beautiful uh, scenery in nature, all of these are blessings. Of course, there's more. There's more. Uh, this picture is just a a general representation, but we can have the peace and love and even deeper relationship with Him, that we can even receive revelation, that we can see visions, that we can see revelation in our life, that God will guide us in all areas. Uh, some people say, how come I have so many problems? Now, there are two sources of problems. First, because of men's general sins. We all suffer because of Adam's sin and our sins in, in general, that we all have suffering. Suffering doesn't mean God doesn't love us, but it's because we live in a sinful world, so we bear the consequence of sin, all of us. The second is, there are sins that come from our own, there are suffering that come from our own sins. For instance, if people, you know, fight with people, argue with people all the time, and don't love their family members, then there will be suffering, right? So there are two kinds of suffering. One is general. That is not because of our sins, but because of all the sins of all people. Because of Adam's, Adam's sin, that we all suffer. And the second are suffering that came from our own sins. That if we don't have good relationship with people, then we'll suffer, right? Then uh, it's, it's very natural. And many people say, oh, I'm so emotional, I'm happy, I'm always a burden, I'm always burdened, I always worry. Then all of this will bring about suffering in our lives. So God wants to bless us. If we keep a close relationship with Him, then we'll be blessed in all areas of our life. Now here, God blesses all people in all areas. I'm sorry that <laughs> I haven't put that in English. Uh, it's Matthew 5.45 that He'll make the sun shine on good people and also on, on evil people. That He'll uh, send the rain to the righteous and the unrighteous. So all people receive general blessings. But then, Matthew 6.33, let's read. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So here it talks about that Blessings give to the righteous. Give to the people who seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So when we follow uh, God and then decide His kingdom to come upon the world, come into our hearts, 
His kingdom is his lordship. You know, where the king reigns is where people accept him as king. So when we, uh, in our heart, in our lives, we accept Jesus' lordship, then his kingdom is in our hearts. Many people believe in Jesus, but they don't, you know, they just believe in Jesus, but they don't have the lordship of Jesus in their lives. And when we seek God's kingdom, not only that the Lord's kingdom will come to the world, come to the church, come to our family, but come to our own lives. So seek His kingdom also means saying, Lord, every area of my life, you are the king. You are the Lord over all areas of our life. So we seek God's kingdom. Yes, my life is totally for you. And I always want to live like that. Uh, actually, when I come all the way, I... I was praying to God. I was enjoying His love. I was connected to His nature, to His love all the time. That uh, uh, early in the morning, I'll wake up. I'll wake up and then I pray to the Lord and then I wait on the Lord. And every day I do that. And I hope that we all will do that. That we have a close relationship with Him. Seek His kingdom and His righteousness. That we want to follow God. That our righteousness, that... We want to live a righteous life. We want to have the righteousness of Jesus and also we want to have a righteous life. Even when people don't treat us well. Even when people, uh, they, you know, they uh, hurt us, they do things that are not pleasant to us, we still bless us. Many people think that's impossible. They'll say, how can I treat those people who treat us so badly? How can we treat them uh, nicely? How can we love them? Well, Jesus wants us to do that. When we, when we are affected by other people, then we'll suffer. When we are angry with people, when we cannot forgive people, then we suffer. When your bosses mistreat you, and then you, you, in your heart we have anger, then we suffer. But you say that is her problem. That is his problem. I just do my part. I just trust in the Lord. Is that easy? When your bosses mistreat you and you still say, God loves me, God loves her or him, uh, he you know, or she did something wrong, but that's her his problem. I keep trusting in the Lord. I will not be affected by him or her. Is it is it easy? It's not easy. But if we let them affect us, then we will suffer. Have you noticed that? Yes. But if we say that is their problem, I just trust in the Lord and I bless Him at the same time, then we can continue to have joy and love, right? So that is righteousness. Righteousness is even when people mistreat us, we treat them with love. Hallelujah. And then all these things will be given to you. Actually, true victory, this teaching, came to me through a lot of suffering. That People mistreated me, but I learned to say, I don't want to be affected by them. It happened when, in 1998, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, when uh, Carlos and Claudia lay hand on me, and experienced a great love coming to me. And I said, wow, I never knew I can experience God's love like that. And so I, I really uh, fell in love with God in a very strong way. And I continue to love Him. And I noticed that when I call upon the name of the Lord, immediately I felt power, joy coming through me. Up to today, every day. And I actually now I can experience His love anytime. For some people, that's impossible. How can you experience God's love anytime? When I think of Jesus, I can experience His love over me all the time. It's really wonderful. And then I notice that when people mistreat me and then I'm affected by them, then I lose that joy or that love. Then I don't experience that anymore. So I said, I have to take care of that. One time some, somebody, I called somebody and told her about my experience with the Holy Spirit, but that person did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And the person was very frustrated. And after I finished the phone call, I, I was burdened. I felt sad. 
And then when I pray, I found that I could not have the joy. So I call her again, and I want to take care of that. And I, I, and I said, if I make you unhappy, please forgive me. Now the person still couldn't accept it, but I have done my part. So I said, I've done my part, I'll put it down. And then I put it down, and then I just praise the Lord, and the joy of the Lord came back to me. So I, on that day, I decided I want to follow God all the time. I will not be affected by people. If people mistreat me, I will just... You know, let it be, put it down, and continue to treat them nicely, but continue to trust in the Lord. And so that started my journey of sure victory, and started to write this uh, teaching. <coughs> First, I experienced it, and then uh, in, uh, in the last two or three years, I started to write it down. And then I found that it really helps me, really helps me in, I, in my life. So I learned this not in an easy, easy way. I learned it through difficulties. And I found that when I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to me. And I hold on to that joy and the love and the presence of God, and I don't want anyone to affect that, to take that away. Do you want your boss to take away your joy? No. no. So, make up your mind. Do not be affected by them, but bless them. <coughs> bless them. Be nice to them. And no matter what they say, it's their problem. <laughs> That's not easy, right? <laughs> we have to tell ourselves, we have to say in our heart, uh, if I've done something wrong, then I ask for forgiveness. If I haven't done anything wrong, is there emotions? You know, sometimes they do have emotions, right? And then the easiest person to put, to dump the emotions on are you, right? Sometimes they think that, well, they have hired you. Sometimes they will say, well, I can just say anything I want to my to my employer E. So they, sometimes they would. Uh, it's very easy for uh, many bosses to mistreat the employees. But then you don't have to take it, right? When people sin, we don't have to take it. And but then at the same time we bless them and try to build up a good relationship. Never say, well, they treat me like this. Then I have to treat them badly in return. Never do that. When we do that, then we uh, gave in to, the, to Satan. And then we'll lose that joy. And then Psalm 3410, let's read. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord will lack no good things. So when we seek the Lord, we'll lack no good things. Sometimes we may say, well, the people around us have more money. I'm not as rich as they are. And then we say, we like good things. But actually, good things is when you have enough to eat already. That's good enough already. You don't need more and more and more money. It doesn't mean when you have more money, then you're hap you'll be happier. When you have in enough to eat, and then you can enjoy the presence of God, and you can enjoy blessing people, you are more blessed than many rich people. Yeah. You're more blessed than many rich people. Many rich people might not enjoy, you know, that relaxation you might have. In my, at the place where I live, I often hear, uh, I believe it's a Filipino singing. I really enjoy hearing her. I can, you know, I can I really uh, sense her joy and her peace in the Lord when she works, she just keeps singing. And so we can, you know, no, uh, we might be, in a, you know, in a people's point of view, we might be lower. But in God's view, we not, might not be lower. Yeah. That when we seek the Lord, that we lack no good things. Yeah. Um, even when we have to suffer physically, even when we are mistreated by people, we still lack no good things. Now, can you have that mentality? Many, very often people have this poor man's mentality. Always saying, I'm poor, I'm miserable, oh, I'm pitiable, oh, I'm suffering all the time. Do we, sometimes, you know, unknowingly, we might have this mentality and say, oh, I'm miserable. But actually, we can say, I'm blessed. I like no good things. This mentality is very important, that when we follow God, we like no good things. 
I always have this mentality. Actually, when my first wife passed away in uh, 2008 uh, because of sickness, and then I, at that time, I wanted to go into the mission field. I just think of, okay, I have enough savings if I go into a poor uh, mission field country and then I can, you know, the money will last for a long time because in the mission field, a lot of times they just, they'll give me food and place to live. So I just can live there and then I can do ministry and then go from one place to another just bringing one luggage. You know, I, I'm trying to think how can I shrink all my belongings into one piece of luggage. But that's my thinking. But God did not plan that. God planned for me to have a wonderful wife. I did not seek her, but then, and she did not seek me. It's the Lord giving us the uh, move in the Lord that both of us received that message. And then we check it out. We, we pray and also we, I test it out many, many times. And I found God's confirmation many times. And so at first I think I will live, you know, carrying one luggage go from one place to another. That is actually not bad. And I even thought this way. It doesn't matter if I lose all money. If I have no money. If I have no money and then no food anymore, I'll just fast and then go to heaven. That doesn't matter. <laughs> or if I'm sick, I'll ask for healing. Or go to the doctor at the same time. You know, we can ask for for healing from God and go to the doctor at the same time. And then if I'm healed, fine, great. If I'm not, then I'll just pray and then go to heaven. That doesn't matter. So my mentality is, even the worst, when the worst happens to me, it doesn't matter. Can you have this mentality? It doesn't matter. I lack no good things. No matter what happens to me, it doesn't matter. So that's my mentality. My whole life is in God's hand. I dedicate my whole life to God. And whatever God wants to do to me, uh, whatever way that He wants to use me is fine. But God did not plan that. God planned something better. And now I have the freedom to go into the mission field and then do different things. And, and God has a different direction because He has a, a wonderful plan. But what I mean is, I expected even the worst. When I think of even the worst happened to me, it doesn't matter. When I have that mentality, I just say my life is in God's hand. My belongings is in God's hand. Everything is in God's hand. And I just follow God. And that way, uh, you know, contrary to what I think, God give me much more. So when we seek God, we'll lack no good things. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are actually very rich? Amen. Even though your bank account might not show a very large figure. But you are still very rich in Jesus. Do you believe that? We are very, very rich. Say to the person next to you. We are very, very rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Genesis 39.2. Let's read. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Joseph was sold by his brothers. Imagine you were sold by your family members. Imagine you were sold by your husband. Will you complain or will you continue trusting the Lord? Many people would complain. But Joseph was sold to Egypt, a new land. And with a new language. I, I, I didn't hear what you said. He's the first domestic home. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And he didn't know, know the language. And then he had to learn a new language. And, but he was with the Lord. That means he must spend time praying to him. Trusting in God. Not complaining, but continue trusting the Lord. And then the Lord was with him, and he prospered. So when we have a close relationship with him, we'll prosper. Our whole life will prosper. I find that I prosper in every area of my life. Every area. I, God has given me many, many gifts, many blessings. And he will do the same to you too. 
I thank God, you know, I just want to name some to just to give glory to God. God give me peace all the time. I can experience Him anytime. I can experience His love and His joy. I think this is the greatest blessing. And then He gave me talents, gifts to bless people, to preach and to pray for people, to lead meetings, to play music. Actually, I learned piano just for a short time, but God gives me the wisdom to learn very quickly and play the guitar and how to lead people to sing, to praise, uh, to praise the Lord, how to enter the presence of God. God has given me all this and He has given me a wonderful life. He has given me everything I need, more than what I need. Give me everything. Give me friends everywhere and give me good health. I'm already 62. But I'm still very healthy and strong, and I will play tennis this afternoon. Yeah. And <laughs> people can't believe I'm 62. I just want to say, when we have a peaceful heart, peaceful life, joyful life, then you stay young for a long time. <laughs> so that's a blessing. I pray for a longer life, not because I fear death. Actually, if I die today, I'm very happy to go to heaven. But I want to stay longer to bless more people. God has given me so many teachings, so very important teachings. I want to spread these teachings to more people. I want to stay longer on earth to bless more people. And so I hope that we all have this mentality. Yes, we can prosper when we follow God. Say to the next person next to you. We can prosper. Hallelujah. When we follow God totally. Hallelujah. So this verse has told us that people in general have blessings, but people who follow God, they trust in God, and have a good relationship with Him, and obey Him in every areas of our life, that will be blessed more than any other people. Hallelujah. Have you seen Christians who suffer, who are not happy, who worry. Sometimes you notice some Christians say they're Christians, but they don't live like Christians. And they suffer. When we find that Christians who don't trust in God have more suffering than Christians who trust in the Lord and follow Him all the, all the time, right? We find that the more we trust in God, the, joy, the more joy we have. Have you found a Christian who trusts in the Lord and follow God and then they, they will be unhappy? Have you found Christians like that? No. We found that all Christians who follow God closely will always enjoy life more. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. So we want to really follow God closely. Have a very close relationship with God. And God can give us, bless us with many things. Let's read. First, Peace, joy, and strength. Second, health, finance. And then three, marriage or single life. Does it matter if we are single? Does it matter if we are single? No, it doesn't matter. Some people, you know, always have this value system saying, I have to get married. So many people around me are married. I have to get married. This thought makes them suffer. Have you noticed that? But you say, whether I'm married or single, it's great. I can enjoy single or married life. Whatever happens to me is fine. Whatever God prepares for me is fine. Amen. I've noticed some people, before they get married, when they are single, they suffer because they say, I want to get married. I don't know if I will get married. And then when they, after they get married, they have arguments with their husband or wife, and then they suffer. So, whether they are not married or married, they suffer because their mentality is wrong. They look for blessings from the earth, not from God. When we have expect blessings from God, then no matter whether we are single or married, right. it's fine. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then number four, spiritual Amen. gifts and power Amen. for ministry that we will have spiritual gifts. Some people say, how come my uh, spiritual life is so weak? How come I don't have spiritual gifts? Because when people worry, when people have burdens, it's very hard to have spiritual gifts. When, even when they have spiritual gifts, it would not be strong. Because the spiritual gifts will be blocked
by their emotions, by their personalities. But if we have healthy personality, we are in peace and joy, then we'll have stronger spiritual gifts. The whole life will blossom. Hallelujah. Amen. You want your whole life to blossom? Amen. Hallelujah. So when you do chores and work at home, do you want to work and then say, Oh, how long do I have to do this? Oh, how come I'm always serving someone else? How come I have to do, do, do this and then they don't have to do it? Do we have this mentality? Or do we say, yes, I can enjoy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No matter what I do, I can enjoy. Hallelujah. Actually, I tell you, I work all day long. When I'm awake, I work all day long. And of course, I have exercise. I have time of prayer. But when I'm not praying, actually when I'm working, I'm also praying too. When I'm playing tennis, I still pray. And I don't waste any time. Because I think my time, our time is so precious. I can do so much. I have so much to write. I continue to write and help people. And uh, God, there's so many ways that God can use my life. So I don't want to waste time. So when I'm tired, I'll rest. And then when I'm up, I'll pray and I will work. And I'll serve God. And all the time, actually, my workload might not be lower than yours. That when I'm working, I still relax and enjoy. When I'm preparing my sermon, when I'm writing, I'll be doing this. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's how I work. <laughs> I don't want to work with burdens. Sometimes people may say, oh, how much do I have to do this? How come it takes so long? This mentality makes us suffer. But if we say, it's okay. And we can enjoy working. So start enjoying your work. Can you do that? Yeah. Start enjoying your work. And then you'll find that your life will blossom more and more. Hallelujah. Some people have schizophrenia. But this is schizophrenia, a term I make up. Schizophrenia instead of schizophrenia. Many people have this schizophrenia. They believe that God is real. God created heaven, God created the world, and God will give us spiritual blessings. But then, a lot of times we trust in the world for physical blessings. That is schizophrenia, schizophrenia. To say that I have to trust in the world, I have to find blessings in the world. Actually, that's why so many Christians don't go to church. They want to work more and more. To have two jobs, three jobs, so that they can make more money. So they put money first. And they say, when I have more money, then I don't have to worry. That's a lie. We don't need more and more money. We just, you know, we need the Lord more. And so many people worry. They, they just find more security in the world. They find security in the bank account. They find security from people who are nice to them. They hold on to the world. Do we want to do that? So we want to say, I believe in God, I know God is in control of everything, so I want to follow God in every area of my life. I don't seek the world, I, I have to work. We all have to work. But the blessings all came from God. When God allows things to happen, then things will happen. And God will bless me with everything. What I have to do is my duties. I have to do these duties. But at the same time, I trust in God. When I work, it's not our boss, our bosses who give us all this blessing. It's God through the boss yes. give us the blessing. Yes. So it's God is the source of all blessing. When we believe that, then we'll follow God totally. And many people don't know that. Many non-Christians, they think, well, I have the world. I don't want to spend time going to church. I don't want to spend time believing in Jesus. They think that the world can give them much. Actually, we can tell people, do you know that when we follow Jesus, we believe in Jesus and follow Jesus, God will give us peace and joy and direction in life and blessing in life, even finance and even good marriage or good single life. And every area of our life will be blessed. Sometimes when we do evangelism, we just tell them you can go to heaven. 
Of course, it's the main blessing. But God gives us blessings in all areas. So when we do evangelism, just don't just tell people we can go to heaven. We can go to heaven, but we can also have blessings of every kind from God. Have you experienced blessings from God in every areas of your life? So we have experienced that and we can share with people and say, God is real. He can really bless us in every area of our life. So when you follow God, it's really great and wonderful. Because many people have this wrong conception. They think that, I want to seek all this blessing from the world. And God will just take away my time and my money when I offer, do offering. But actually, when we follow God, He will bless us with heavenly blessings, but also blessing on earth. All the blessings on earth. When we experience that, we can tell people. And, and also, we can, anytime, when you pray to God, anytime we can experience His love and joy. And in a moment when I pray for you, I want you to remember how to open your heart so that every time when you pray, you can have the power. And then when you pray for people, you can carry the power of God. My point is not just for me to bless you. My point is that you receive the way how to pray to God with an open heart, to so hunger for God, and then you carry the blessings of God, the anointing of God all the time, and then you'll be blessed and you can bless all people. Do you want to follow God that way? That all areas of our life will be blessed, that we live a blessed life. Hallelujah. Sometimes people have a wrong picture of our lives. Sometimes we say, oh, our life is, oh, we have to do this work, that work, take care of uh, uh, the, my boss' work, and I take care of my family in the Philippines, I have to do this and do that. That is my life. Sometimes we have this wrong conception. But we think of, in front of us is all blessings. The road is full of blessings. Even though there is suffering and work for the Lord, but yet, there is blessings all the way. Can you think of your life like that? I think of my life as full of blessings. Every day. Every day, every moment. I always live in a condition of my mind that I enjoy His blessing all the time. I continue to enjoy His blessings every day. Every day I live in that condition. Do you want to live like that? So when this second point of show victory is very important, that we know that all blessings from, come from God. So we trust in God only and follow God, although we have to, you know, we do our duties. And, and I ask that God will help us to take away all this poverty mentality, saying, oh, I'm poor, Miss, miss uh, the miserable mentality, saying I'm miserable, I'm pitiable, but we say no. We are blessed when we follow God. And then we also have to check out in our lives what areas in our life that we are not following God. Can you think of some areas in our life that we are not following God? For instance, our emotions, our desires in our hearts, our sins, our burdens, our worries, all this. You might say, I, I don't see my family in the Philippines. I worry for them. Now, worry, does it help? No, we can pray for them. We can love them. Love them. We can call them up and bless them and, and uh, guide them in some ways. But worry doesn't help. A lot of people think that it's natural to worry. It's natural to worry, but in God, we don't have to worry. Let us rise now and, and come to God and say, Lord, I haven't put you in every area of my life. I have not let you be my king but my Lord, in every area of my life, please forgive me that I will now let you be the King and the Lord of every area of my life. I want to follow you totally and then I can enjoy life in every area. And then every day I can live in joy and peace. Every day I can laugh. Every day I can relax and enjoy. Enjoy the presence of God. And let me share with you some of the ways that we can pray to enjoy the presence of God. One way, of course, is the desiring God, hunger for God. Oh, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. If you learn, learn to do that from the bottom of your heart, of all my soul to love God, all my soul to desire God, then His presence will come upon you. That's one area we'll learn. 
and then of course we have intercession, pray for, pray for people, pray for the church, pray for the uh, city, the country, and then also we have a kind of prayer is just loving God, connecting to God, liking God, like when we're doing chores, we just like God. That is a kind of prayer. Oh, just like God. For instance, now I'm preaching, I'm thinking about my message. So I cannot be praying with words. I would just be having a heart to like God, to desire Him, just to love His presence. And then there is also a different kind of prayer, waiting for the Lord, waiting for the Lord. After we have filled the Holy Spirit, we can calm down, relax, and just enjoy His presence. Uh, you don't have to think of, oh, when will he talk to me? You don't have to think about it. Just relax and enjoy him. Put down all the burdens, but concentrate on him. Do not go into dreams. Do not think about daily chores. Do not think about, do not go into a thinking mode. Just thinking of him and enjoying him with the heart. Just, it takes time to learn. It takes time to learn. But then after, sometimes people might take a few months, sometimes one year or two years. Sometimes much shorter. People start to hear the voice of God. Now this is into this is entering a different level of presence with God. That we can go into revelation, dreams and visions. That you just wait on the Lord, meditate on the Lord, concentrate on Him. And don't think of what will happen. When, you, when we think of what will happen, then we have burdens. Mm -hmm. Just relax and enjoy Him. And just spend time. Wake up early. I find that actually uh, we don't need as many hours of sleep as some people think. Mm -hmm. Actually, I sleep less now, but I'm still very energetic. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I woke up this morning at 5. A lot of times I go to about... Actually, I like to go to sleep earlier, but my wife has a lot of work, so a lot of times I, I sleep at 11. So I have less time to, to sleep, but I have, still have a lot of energy. And I wait for the Lord. The first thing will happen to you is you become more calm and peaceful. That you can enter a very peaceful mode anytime. When I came here on the way, on MTR, I was enjoying this connection with God. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. And then gradually you hear the voice of God. And then gradually you might go into visions and dreams. Now some of you may already have visions and dreams from God. When you do this, you enter into a stronger uh, relationship with God. And some people will enter into a, a revelation level of ministry that you receive revelation from God. How many of you have spiritual dreams and visions from God? Can you raise your hands here? How many of you here that you see visions from God or spiritual dreams from God? Anyone here? Not yet. Huh? You spend time quieting yourself, just relaxing in God. You might start to see visions. And I pray that next time I'll come, some of you will say, oh, I start to see visions. Hallelujah. Put down, put down all the burdens. Let's rise now and ask God to forgive us that we have not put God in the first place in our life. And we'll ask God to forgive us. Let's rise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's rise. Confess our sins to God and say, Lord Jesus, we have not let you be our Lord in every area of our life. Please forgive me. And wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. Set me free. Oh. to realize that it's foolish to think that the world can give us all these blessings. All blessings have to come from God. You are the source of all blessings. 
and in you we have we can have faith we know that we'll receive all kinds of blessings Lord Jesus we want to live in you totally please forgive us for our negative emotions our negative ways of thinking our negative behavior please forgive us give us repentance Lord Jesus we have not followed you totally please give us repentance and say Lord I want to follow you totally you can give me all blessings why live in a world with suffering and burdens I want to live with peace and love and joy hallelujah praise you thank you emotional life in your hand. I want to live in peace all the time. I want to trust in you all the time. I want to let you be my Lord in every area of my life. I want to follow you totally. Oh, Lord Jesus, I dedicate my heart to you. I dedicate my heart to you. Hallelujah. I dedicate my hearts to you. Lord, dwell in my heart. Stay in my heart. Take worship of my life oh Lord Jesus I am yours I am yours I am yours I can start to enjoy life more and more oh I can enjoy your love I can receive all blessings from you more and more blessings from you when I trust in you when I have a close relationship with you and when I obey you oh 